What up, what up, what up, man? I'm a little early. I know I told you guys 11 o'clock, but we want to get this thing started. Watch, they're going to be popping on shortly. Just let you know, you'll see how many people get on right there. Same thing with this one's up in the corner, but we don't worry oh, about that. Okay. What's good, man? Where y'all at? Where y'all at? Let's get it cracking. Connection is weak, but it'll be what it'll be. Houston, what up with it? Percy, what it do? Quentin, what it do? Colin, what up with it? All my YouTube fans, what it do? I can't call it Colin, just sitting here chilling, man. HD Row, what up with it? TR, Big Ty, what up? Miss Carla Whitehead. <laughs> Look who I'm with, Carla. Look who I'm with. <laughs> that's my sis. Hey, man. That's my baby. She know I love her. Mm -hmm. Hey, T. <laughs> <laughs> what up, man? They say, Quentin, say good morning my, to my guests. Adrian, what good it do? Morning. Ed, so what's happening with it, man? Let's get these numbers up so we can get this thing started, man. Today, you guys are in for a real special treat, man. Trust me, I'm all the way somewhere where I don't know where I'm at. <laughs> down the way to do. I've never been on this side of Atlanta before, though. So we in the heart of Atlanta, man. We down here deep, man. You know what I'm talking about? And this is the first time I ever took that exit on 285. I'm from 20 to 285. So you know, normally when you get on 20, you go to 285. That is that one exit. I had to take that one today. So you in Flatland? I'm in. That's what it's called, Flatland. 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 Okay. In the Ville. In the Ville? Mm -hmm. This Mechanicville? Or Adamsville. Adamsville. Okay, we'll see. We'll learn something new every day. I'm in Adamsville. <laughs> yeah, I keep telling you I'm certified. <laughs> what up with it, Donald? What up with it, Quinn? All right, listen. T today's man, today live broadcast is going to be about history, man. We're going to go over and talk about the history of the Atlanta motorcycle set. Um, Sweet T, I call it sis. You know, uh, I, I don't call her Sweet Tea, but I just call her Sis, <laughs> Miss Teresa. Um, she's been around on the set, man, in Atlanta for what, over what? Over 30 years. Over 30 years. About 32 years. On the motorcycle. Not just here in Atlanta, but on the motorcycle set. Yeah. Yeah. 32 yeah. years. Yeah. So yeah. today we're going to get some of this history, man, and we're going to keep, what I would have keep, we're going to go over and just talk about, man, from then to now, man. And again, my whole purpose for these videos and these interviews is to is to give you guys some sense of pride and some history and to know some things, man. So when you hear some things and you go to talking about things, you know what you're talking about. And it's coming from from vets, people that's been here before us, people who who saw all of the transitions. And y'all know me. I'm not going to take it easy on it. So we're going to ask some real tough questions and, uh, you know, we're going to get it together, man. I keep saying my connection is weak. I think it's, it's, it's let me see. Um, that's about as best as it's gonna get. So it's gonna have to work. Click into my Wi-Fi. Oh, you got a code for it? Yeah, I have to go get. It. <laughs> I don't know what it is right off. Okay. Yeah. If you want to, we can. But if not, it's okay. Right. It'll be all right. It'll get better. Okay. All right. So introduce yourself to the people. Hi, I'm Teresa Sweet Tea Sykes. Sweet Tea Sykes. Everybody knows Sweet Tea Golden Hawks. Golden Hawks. <laughs> First question: How long you been Golden Hawks? I've been with the Golden Hawks since about uh, 1980. 1980. About 1980. Yeah. Good Lord have mercy. A little bit before then, but uh, not officially. <laughs> so is the Golden Hawks the only club you've ever been with? Officially? Yeah. Uh, no, I was with the Super Riders at one time. I was also a uh, sister club when I was in a social club with the Super Riders. I did a thing with the Pace Setters, uh, did a thing with the Outcasts, and with the Born Losers. Okay. You know, but always home with the Golden Hawks. Always home with the Golden Hawks. Yeah. So, how long, are you born and raised here in Atlanta? Born and raised right here. Born and raised born in Atlanta. Born and raised right here where you sit. <laughs> <laughs> so, being here all that time, what, what brought you to the motorcycle set? 
One day, down the street here, this guy's got this bike. I knew him. He went to high school with uh, some of my niggas across the street, and he came up the street. Mm -hmm. I was 16. Mm -hmm. And uh, he asked me if I wanted to ride. And I mean, you know, I'm thinking it looks cool because I already like fast cars. Okay. I was always on the uh, powder puff track, racing three speeds, four speeds, down Simpson and whatever, doing the 68, 69 Chevelle era. Okay, so uh, I jumped on this bike and uh, immediately I burned my leg because I hit my leg on the, on the, on the tailpipe. I okay. had no idea. And didn't want to say anything because I didn't want to look bad like I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> so I rode around the corner and then on the street back with my leg. So you rode the bike. You didn't get on the no, back? No, I mean, I was on the back. Okay, yeah, I okay. was on the back. I got on there with my leg hurting for a good while. Okay. Um, since then, I learned. I didn't know any better, but that was the first thing. And he was a golden hawk. Okay. Uh, Fox. He was a Golden Hawk, and from that day on, that was my introduction into the Golden Hawks and to the bike set, because I just loved yeah. motorcycles. Fast cars, fast motorcycles. I can but imagine back then, um, women, or a woman, aren't being affiliated with the motorcycle set probably was a little difficult back then. Uh, very difficult. Um, women were known as whores, you, you know, you had... There were all kind of myths, different things that you had to do and what you didn't have to do, uh, being on the bike set, and you were looked at a little bit differently. So, um, Renegade you, excuse me. Um, so you looked at you looked at a little bit differently, uh, and uh, they figured you didn't have jobs and you just run around with. Gang of guys and and stealing and doping and all that and that really was not the case. Um, the brothers took care of the, the sisters. We took care of them. They protected us whenever we went anywhere. We did go anywhere without them. But the main thing they did, they taught us how to ride motorcycles. Okay. And that was definitely something that was taboo at that time. No, you could not join a club. Uh, because that definitely was not heard of, and but you could get away with riding a motorcycle, and uh, yeah, people look at you differently uh, riding a motorcycle. You didn't have one, but the guys taught you. The guys let you ride. Um, so you, I mean, the, the the camaraderie and the love that was just you know that surrounded you was just you know phenomenal. I didn't have. Uh, any sisters only had one brother. He was five years younger than me. So these gangs, as they wanted to say back then, which they were clubs, uh, they were they were they were they were my family. Yeah, yeah. I heard you mention well, briefly. We we will get into it a lot more. Where you say women were definitely not allowed in in a motorcycle club. They were not allowed. No, uh, <laughs> I can remember. Uh, going to the Outlaws down in Camerton. Because at one point in time, the Golden Hawks and, and the Outlaws, we would visit each other's clubhouse and it wasn't no big deal. It was us on that side of town and them down on Camelton Road. They were the, the white group, so nobody really paid that much attention to them. But, you know, we were all family. Yeah. And we stepped up in there one night uh, with the brothers. We were out just all hanging out somebody's bike night and we stopped by there and uh you know the reception you know we had to kind of stand over here in the back and be in the background because it just was not women just weren't allowed there you know um but i mean even now like like he spoke of the outlaws which is the white motorcycle club here in georgia right why we don't have that connection now what, what, now, what, what severed that connection i now that is <laughs> to tell you the truth i really don't know what severed that uh, back during that time uh, like I said we visited them they visited us they got into a little trouble uh, with internal revenue and with the law and, mm -hmm. and a couple of things that were going on down there so it got to a place we could not go to them anymore Okay, uh, had to stay away uh, they came back and 
there was some other issues that were going on with some things. So, so it was, was it ever a race States. issue? Was it ever a at race At that thing? time, it yeah. had nothing to do with race. Nothing. Nothing to do with race at all. Uh, they took care of that side of the town. We were on this side of the town. When you say that side of the town, you're not talking about the blacks and the whites. You're just saying... No, just side of the town that they were on. Okay. You know, as, as far as uh, people visiting and... and and also, during that time, there was also, say, not a limit on how motorcycle clubs popped up or whatever, but I don't know, maybe it was just an unexplained rule. You had to check with certain people. You had to, to, to get to know certain people. You just couldn't pop up and start putting motorcycle clubs all over the place. Yeah. Um, from the Golden Hawks came the Outcasts. Okay. Okay. Um, so well, let me ask you this: Born Losers is is the oldest club here in Georgia, correct? Born Losers was always the other club because they were always on the other side of town. Going from here to the to Born Losers, it's like you coming here from yeah. home. That was a long ways. Yeah. Okay. So, Born Losers, Wind Jammers, Top Ten, they all did their thing on their side of town. Uh, anniversaries, we would visit. But yeah. in between time, we did. Y'all never really saw them. Except for the beer run that the Born Losers had. At the time, where the Born Losers are now, they weren't there. Okay. okay. Evidently. They were out by a lake. Okay. Little shack out by the lake. And we had the best funds. We had camp outs probably every weekend because that's, that's what we did. Okay. Uh, they did their camp outs on their side of town and there was a place down here off of Fulton Industrial where we had camp outs on this side of town. But uh, they had that beer run and it wasn't the same way uh, that it's it been not. done now. Okay. We, they actually, we actually hunted for little eggs and little prizes to get okay. beer or to get money or to get different things. It was like a big grown-up Easter egg hunt. Okay. Okay. Um, and you paid so much money to be a part to do that. And uh, they sold food and naturally they had beer. Yeah. Uh, and the only the people on this other town that did the beer run was the, uh, Easy Nights and Griffin. Okay. They would have the beer run. And I sat down and I thought last night about Born Losers and Easy uh, Nights having beer runs. And I'm thinking... Wonder why sometimes they would only somebody that had beer runs. But when I think about it and think about all the clubs then that had clubhouses, nobody really had a yard okay. or uh, uh, any grassy areas to do anything like that. Everybody had their clubhouse. It was sitting on a slab or whatever, but there was no, no grass around. Okay. So uh, I suppose that's one reason why they did. Uh, but that was an event that was looked for and looked to every year. Easy nights, and they'll be wrong. Born losers, and they'll be wrong. Mm. Uh, but as far as the the city itself, the Golden Hawks was the oldest. Okay, so uh, Golden, when you say the city inside of Atlanta, we're talking about in, 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 in Atlanta, right? In, in Atlanta. Metro Atlanta, yeah, okay. in Metro Atlanta. So right. Golden Hawks was the one every uh, every the club that was were they the only club that had a clubhouse here in Atlanta? Well, during that time, all clubs that were motorcycle clubs had a clubhouse. Oh, so that was standard procedure. That was just standard procedure. Uh, if you started a club, Outcast started off and they didn't have a place and they met in a little house. Super Riders uh, didn't have a place at the time and then they ended up on Boulder Park down here meeting at the end of the street in a little house. They, everybody started, Golden Hall started off at a little house over there off Bankhead. Everybody had a little house okay. that they, they started off in, but they, you know, this was just a regular little house, house. shack like. But uh, they eventually all got clubs and there was not one motorcycle club in the Atlanta or surrounding areas that did not have a clubhouse. So that was standard procedure. Standard procedure. Uh, and Outcast came along and they were sort of like the governing body. At one point we had a, a, a board, I suppose, made of, of the few clubs that we had to sit and govern clubs that came in. How well, they came I mean, so in. but if you're saying that there wasn't that many clubs there, why would a board? Why was a board needed? Because people were were starting to come. You had little people that started jumping up, 
having riding motorcycles and want to call themselves a motorcycle club. But so how many clubs when you when you first started? Okay, well, how I, many clubs were? Okay, you had uh, Golden Hogs. Okay. You Outcasts came along. Uh, Super Riders. You had the Street Lords. They won McDaniel Street. Uh, Cobras won Northside Drive. At that time, the strikers started. They started on Bankhead. Uh, you had the pace setters. Pace setters were on Bankhead. Super Riders were on Bankhead. Um, you had Born Losers, uh, Rock Riders, Windjammers, Top Ten on that side of town. Uh, easy nights down in the south. Um, that pretty much. That's about ten or eleven clubs. That's yeah. That's pretty much it. Were the clubs? Was, did the clubs have made a lot of members in? Was it like fifty members per club or just ten? Oh, uh, at one point in time, the Hawks. I can remember at one time when you included, and they did include property of. Uh, if we went to. Um, go for trophy counts or anything but yeah we had about 50 at that time okay. uh born losers uh probably had the largest amount of, of anybody mm -hmm. and then super riders when they came along super riders if you're talking about the members and private oh super riders had about 50 we would go somewhere we'd, we'd always get the trophy um uh the other clubs were smaller um Outcast came along and they boosted their numbers over the years and got huge, huge, huge boosted numbers. Uh, but a lot of the people that were here, they came in, you know, because um, Outcast always had people that were here from out of town. They would come in and stay sometime a couple of months or two from Michigan, from, from different places, and mm -hmm. they would still be a part of the club. Nobody else really had that uh, uh, at that time but the Outcast. Okay. Um, so, uh, so Outcast, Outcast kind of formed itself, formed themselves here in Atlanta from from members from of Out the Golden Hawks. Oh, oh, from Golden Hawks. From members of the Golden Hawks. Yes. Okay. Kickstand was a member of the Golden Hawks. Okay. Uh, I could name several that you know. I suppose maybe some people know and some people didn't know, but uh, three members from there uh, came from the Golden Hawks and they stuck, went to Detroit and uh, talked to the people up there and they came back and they started the Outcast. Mm. So, uh, at that point, they were just outcasts in the Golden Hawks. Yeah. Okay. In the city of Atlanta. In the city of Atlanta, right. Uh, James Gang was over on Murphy Avenue. And they've been around a long time, too. J and I tell you who else. Black Romans were over there where the Vikings are now. Black Romans? Black Romans. Mm. That's where the Black Romans had their clubhouse uh, in that particular space uh, where the Vikings have theirs now. So, uh yeah, because uh, during, even during that time, the Strikers had not even started. I remember when the Strikers started in a little place there on Bankhead. Yeah. Uh, and then they moved to the Greasy Hill on Decatur Street. But uh, even during that time, the Strikers had not even started. Mm. Yeah, so... Uh, you mentioned a lot of clubs that we've never heard of. we never said they just faded out. Guess, yeah, yeah. yeah. All the time. Pay setters is no longer... Super Riders no longer still got the colors hanging in the closet. Of what? <laughs> uh, what? The uh, Super Riders. Super Riders. Yeah, except, yeah wow. I still got the colors hanging in the closet. Um, but um, it was it was it was a family. Everybody had their bike night. Uh, Tuesday night I think was James Gang. Wednesday night was the Cobras. Uh, Thursday night was the Strikers. Friday nights always belonged to the Golden Hearts. Okay. Um, and we did the same thing. We went bike night to night to night to different. But it was it was at that time it was strictly going to clubhouse. You guys. You, oh go, yeah, we didn't go didn't even, yeah. nowhere. But no, yeah. you wouldn't even. Well, first of all, they wouldn't even allow us probably to be at a club or any other institution with a bunch of bikers anyway. Was it uh, rowdy back then? It was not rowdy. Yeah. Depending on how you call rap. <laughs> okay. Y'all know y'all was a bunch of hooligans, man. Don't yeah, you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We drank, we drank plenty, and we slept on the bikes plenty of times yeah. on the ground by the curb. You know, it wasn't no going to no hotels. Yeah. Getting the hotels when you went out. Uh, -uh it wasn't none of that. First of all, if you went to a club's uh, anniversary or something, nine times out of ten, you yeah. were going to stay. If they didn't have any place for you to camp out 
uh, or you just got drunk and you just slept on your bike, yeah. you stayed in the clubhouses. Whoa. Everybody stayed in the clubhouse. You didn't go anywhere. You stayed there all night. They took care of you. They fed you breakfast. You had somewhere to sleep. Mm. If there was not a room in the clubhouse, especially with ladies, uh, when you went to clubhouses like that, somebody would take you home to their house to stay. Okay. Uh, you would go to the president's house, vice president's house, or this person's old lady's house. Somebody would take you in and let you go to their house to stay. And then you come back to the clubhouse, you'd have your breakfast, you'd have your little goodbye, and they'll send you on about your way. Mm. Um, yeah, hotels were non-existent. First of all, if you did go somewhere in a hotel, I don't even know if they would let you stay during that time. Because that signified the gang and that looked rowdy and I guess they figured we were going to come in there and steal and rob and pillage their ladies. So, yeah. uh, that was, that. I mean, it wasn't even thought of. You stayed at the clubhouse. Whoa. Uh, when we went to Daytona, you stayed on the curb, you stayed on the corner or at that time in Daytona you could really, really, really camp out all different places and uh, you you didn't stay in hotels because you couldn't get one anyway. They probably didn't let us there. And even Myrtle Beach, yeah, uh, Myrtle Beach. I remember Myrtle Beach. You camped out. Okay. You camped out on the beach. Yeah. The Golden Hawks always had that little end down on the far end around in that curve there, and that's you stayed on the beach you, yeah. in Daytona. You stayed. On, I mean, you always camped out. So hotels. When people start getting hotels and staying in hotels, it was kind of. You know, kind of weird. Kind yeah, of weird. <laughs> like that ain't no well, motorcycle. Ain't no stuff. motorcycle stop. <laughs> Y'all ain't about this life. Here. <laughs> <laughs> y'all got hey, you see anything say y'all done got soaked, but you think they about that motorcycle like a life, man. <laughs> yeah, that was just not what you did. Cause you you have to remember now, we, we started out riding some fifty hundreds on uh the hard, you know, yeah. with, with 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 you know, you riding from here to Augusta say on that. You had I mean, you know, you had to have have your, have your stuff together because yeah. that was a hard ride, yeah. you know. And you got off. No, you had to get back on to come back. But it, you got used to it. Yeah, you know, you really got used to it. And during that time, I know they don't do it now. But during that time, say we made a trip like to Daytona, and uh, guys, you riding with a guy on the back, yeah. and y'all wrote down some. He gets tired. You know, they pull over all the guys that had girls on their bikes. Knew how to ride bikes, and the girls would take over when they ride the bikes. No, sir. Back up the road. No, oh, yes, sir. They did. No, you're not finna. Oh, yes, they did. No, you're not. You're not oh, gonna yes, tell me that no guy was yes, on the back of no man. Yes, they no, did. Yes, they did. Hey, no, we, and not, we drove. We don't believe that. We drove we the bikes. Be, no, ma'am. Yes, no, yes. ma'am. And I could call some clubs that did it. No, ma'am. Yes. Ain't no way in the world you yes. finna tell me uh -huh. that if you had a woman on the back of your bike, she knew how to ride. First, so she had to know how to ride even to be associated with the basically. Kind no, of sort of, you know, yeah, kind of sort of, because she had to be about that life. If she didn't like that, then she really didn't associate. Her. It's not the way it is now. Girls come and, you know, they just hang with the guys because they're dating or whatever. But, you know, at that time, you really had to be about that life. So you're telling me what you're saying is, mm -hmm. you're saying that if a female that knew how to ride was on the back of a bike and he got tired, she would have to take Most over. of the time he was drunk. Okay. More than tired. Okay. Most of the time they yeah, they, 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 they So alcohol and the motorcycle set been together for a long oh, time. Oh, yeah, long time. <laughs> long time. Long time. Long time. Yeah. But long you're time. saying that she had to know she had to know how to how to how to ride and when he got too drunk or tired, she would have to drive and he would hold on to her on the back. We of would have yeah, we would have to ride the bikes back. Hey, we go y'all yay. Yeah, that's amazing right there. That is truly amazing. I can I'm, tell I'm with, you, I'm with you, Kelvin. No way, man. No way, man. I can man. tell you about a trip that I had to make coming back from Birmingham uh, from a lowrider's anniversary. Hey, no matter, you got any pics of that? <laughs> oh, I, I, oh, I, I, I. She meant to get it. She had the whole thing. I have thing. a whole thing with them. I was going to have those out because some of the people, I'm pretty sure, I'd have to get permission before I showed them anyway because <laughs> they would not have wanted these pictures, for, especially for some people to see. But, um, uh, and remember here I said during that time it was Golden Hawks and Outcast, so that was it. But uh, uh, I came back, I had had a lot to drink myself that night, and yeah. I really, we didn't stay up all night, and I really wasn't trying to come back. But coming back from Birmingham, then I don't know if it was a punishment to me or, you know, because I don't see folk was drunk or tired, that I had to drive back. Mm -hmm. 
And I'm I'm pissed because my head is knocking, but I had to do that. That was, you know, you... And he was on the back holding on I, you. I had to do that. And okay. he was on the back holding on to you. It would, no, they don't hold on, you know, they but they sitting back there, right? So anyway, hey, we get to Aniston. <laughs> we get to Aniston. And, uh... You know, you know, and I'm, my head's knocking. You know how it is when you're coming down past those transfer trucks early in the morning, and that stuff's kind of pulling you over, and you trying to pull over here, and you already got your head hurt, and it's booming. It's like by the time I got to Aniston, it's like I know folk in Aniston. When I get to Aniston and we get ready to gas up, yeah, I'm getting off this bitch. Yeah, I'm getting off this. I, I'm, I'm going down here to these riders. And somebody's gonna take me back home, but I am not doing this anymore. And that 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 was so. And uh, but <laughs> there were a lot of situations. Uh, my girl Hollywood took a lot of stuff to the grave with her, cause back during that time, going back and forth to 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 Birmingham and Aniston, it was Tuscaloosa. It was it was soft chain, mm. Huntsville. Lucky Sam and Oh yeah. my God. <laughs> no, oh, oh, oh. And see, going to St. Louis, the Crown Royals, or going to Wisconsin to uh, Throttle Twist. Oh. So, y'all used to ride like that back then? We, St. Louis is a nice but ride. Let me, but let me tell uh, you. What you call them a nice let ride? Let me tell you here again. If we left here going somewhere out of town, Okay. We rode a motorcycle. Period. 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 Yeah. We went to Daytona. Wouldn't have, wouldn't have never thought to go to Daytona and not been on a motorcycle. It just wasn't heard of. Mm. We just wouldn't do that. Uh uh. You ain't going to Daytona Bike Week without no bike. So, um, when you had property of, uh, which most clubs at that time all had a property of that was that was the norm. Mm. Uh, you know, we get I had a van and we get in the van, we get all ladies in the van and then we go down. Plus we would also be the ones that would pull the trailer. Okay. So in case somebody broke down or what have you, there would be you know, a trailer there to put the bikes on and we keep on doing whatever we're doing. So there was always that vehicle that was... So you guys always had a chase vehicle. Well, yeah, Everybody right, was right. on bikes, but right. it was always that one chase vehicle. Right, right. And, that, you said and most of the time, pro property, property of were, were doing that, yeah. Okay, now, we're speaking on, for you guys just now checking in, we're speaking on the early history of the Atlanta motorcycle bike set. And... What actually brought this on, man, is that we've lost a couple of our G's uh, yeah. recently over the last couple of years. And Auntie called, Teresa called and said, hey, I really would like to document some of this stuff and give some history. Um, not to correct anybody or not to do anything, but just to put it out there, man, so that whoever wants to know can know. Whoever wants to learn or whoever wants to hear it, we'll hear it. And that's what we're doing today. So we're talking about over 30 something years ago. Back then, property of, what did property of stand for? Property of <laughs> what it stood for. Most of the time, if you were property of back then, you were either the wife or girlfriend uh, of one of the members in the club. Okay. Uh, there were some clubs that were allowed to have more than one property, and, and, and most most guys did have more than one property. Okay. They had their wife, they had their girlfriend, or they had an extra friend. Uh, most guys had two or three vests, so when we went out of town, uh, whoever was with them at that particular time on that particular day, they put the vest on, they won, so they could get So the guys held the property of vests? The guys held the property of vests. So the women didn't get to take it and go home? The women only got to do that if they were married to them or this was their, you know, they were married to them. Most of the time, the guys. The, the, the so they met, if they met somebody that they was messing with that weekend, they could actually give her a property of best to put on. Yes, they could. Yeah, okay. they could. Uh -huh. And they took it back. Yeah. Uh, and like I said, most guys had two or three vests. Uh, I know some of the hogs still got two or three vests. <laughs> okay. So, but uh, you know, that was just you know that was just what it was. But uh, basically, we took care of. 
things guys didn't take care of. We did cooking. We would we would wash. Not only wash clothes for your old man, but you would have certain people that would wash. Like say say Big Gwen uh, and the Golden Hogs. At one point, she had a washing machine, so we would go over there and, and they two or three or four of the guys take their clothes over there and we wash their clothes. Yeah. Um, we cooked. It's go, it would never be a day that some Sundays, if we didn't cook at the clubhouse, somebody at their house over here, my mama, me, myself, uh, Big Win, uh, Pooh and them, and I can, whoever the property of, somebody was going to cook. Okay. And everybody was going to come over and they were going to eat. Um, Hollywood and the Strikers, Brenda and the Strikers. Uh, so that somebody is asking. Reason. Somebody is asking. Is is the property? Is, are you asking is the property of just a one percent of thing, or is that just a? Because Golden Hawks is not one percent. Right. At that time, it was not a one percent of thing. Okay. No, I'm noticing now that people are saying that th this was the case, but back then, uh, there were not that many one percent of clubs here. Okay. Uh, and those that did, they had property, but all the other clubs had. Uh, well, probably that was just a regular thing, period. Right. It was just, that was that was what the women were. Because they had to women, have that in order to hang out. Right, women were not allowed to be members. Period. Women really were not allowed around. But if you were associated with it and you would spend that much time, there was no such thing as support. Or anyway, if you basically, if you were a woman. If you, you was there hanging out, you had a property of it. You, you had a property of vest. Social and savings clubs came along because okay. uh, I was a member of the socialites and we were sister club to the super riders when they were around. Uh, and you would come to their tea, you know, we'd have teas on Sunday and, and they would help the guys out and, you know, what have you. And they would just go to us when the anniversary come and all that kind of stuff. But uh, women just didn't hang around the motorcycle club unless you were with somebody mm. and basically you really didn't hang around there unless you knew somebody anyway because most people I understand were just scared to go into a motorcycle clubhouse period period so and that's one thing I spoke on too I remember my uncle um, was in a mo he was in a, a club back in LA and it was always a private thing mm -hmm. it yeah. was always a private thing was it really that private back then yes it was and here again it you just couldn't walk up into a motorcycle club unless somebody, at first, especially with women, you didn't walk up into a motorcycle club unless somebody invited you there. Period. Uh, you had to be invited. And wasn't no strange guys weren't coming in there unless they came with a member or, here again, they were invited there. Yeah. You just didn't come up in a motorcycle club. Uh, and like I said, people did not even want to because they just had this idea that we were so sinister okay. and that... Uh, it was always amazed some of my coworkers and some of my friends when I would take them to the motorcycle club and they actually had a good time. Mm. Uh, it was not the perception of what they thought it would be uh, and they were treated with the respect. utmost respect and uh, they actually had a good time and always wanted to come back. It was just this... Um, status thing or whatever I don't know uh, thing that they would not come back and frequent because they just assumed they should not be there weren't supposed to be there or not yeah. supposed to be there okay. you know uh, whatever learned or taught behavior that they had so but uh, generally uh, everybody we always had a good time all the clubs together there was you know we did have a summer back about 1984 I want to say 83, 84, when we did have a problem. You said we go to Hawks? No, the, the bike set itself. Okay. Uh, there was an issue with the Cobras and uh, some other people about uh, a woman and somebody taking a vest. And it all completely got messed up and got out of hand. And there got to be a problem because you know how it is about these vests. You know, you don't touch them, you don't put them down, and you're definitely not going to have some guy going to come and take a vest from another woman belonging to somebody else. So yeah. it created uh, a war that summer, uh, and uh, all the clubs had to go to a divide. They didn't hang together. People went off to New York. We had to rally money to get people out of jail. Um, it was that bad, huh? It was it was that bad. Uh, it was bad. Um, that was a, a hell of a summer. You said that was summer of 84? 
I want to say it's somewhere 83 or 84, 83. somewhere like that, yeah. Uh, so, from the clubs that you see now, I mean, and what you see now, are you happy with it, with the bike set today? Give it no, to now. I'm Give not. It to I'm not. It 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 hurts me to see the animosity and the hatred and and I don't know the competitiveness or I don't know. We're a group. We 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 like motorcycles. This is a hobby. This is um. This is recreation. You couldn't say back then. You couldn't say this was a hobby or this is recreation. Huh? Or, or, or could you? You could, I mean, it, well, that was the only thing that could be back then. But, you know, we didn't have all the fancy bikes and all the motorhomes and, you know, people trying to have the better bike than this one or the faster bike than that yeah. one. You know, we were... This none was, of that mattered at all. None of that mattered at all. Uh, you didn't have to be in a club and everybody, you know, when, when, when the outcast first started off, believe it or not, most of the folk that started off with Alcat, all of them had darn Hondas. Everybody had Hondas back then. Yeah. If you had a Harley and you were lucky enough to get the Harley, which there were people in the Hawks that were lucky enough to get a Harley back then, but they were raggedy. They spit oil all over the place. <laughs> Every time you stopped, you had to do something to yeah. it. So they, you know, and then too, hey, I don't think there were too many Harley dealerships that would have sold one to us if we had the money anyway. You said us blacks. Blacks, right. Okay. You know, it, it, it wasn't that kind of thing. You would, if you had, when we first started out like that and we had Harleys and we would go to Daytona and what have you, uh, we were shunned and we were cussed out. And yeah. some some of the white folk really, really, really took a real disliking to black folk with them Harleys. Mm. Uh, it made me change the way I felt about Harleys after a while because I thought... Um, they didn't want us to have them, so we didn't need them. Yeah. You know, uh, that was America's bike. But uh, that show wasn't nothing but like the sound of it, and it fell on my butt. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, the history that you have coming from, the uh, we, like the stuff we're going through now with the racism, black, you know, they, the Black Lives Matter movement, the police killing blacks and all that. I mean, you dealt with that a lot in your earlier age, or no? Was that here in Georgia? Was that actually, did Georgia have that race problem back, you know, when you were coming up? I went to school with the King children, all the young children. We went to Southwest. We helped to start and uh, integrate the school back then. It, I tell you, it was a race problem because during that time, I suppose everybody was all up about it and they were wanting better schools, they were wanting a better life and in order to do that, they had to infuse with the whites in order to get that because they had a better standard of living than we had at that time. Mm -hmm. But growing up as I did on this side of town, which you see now, which uh, predominantly black. Which no, it was what? predominantly white. There were no blacks out here when my mom and daddy moved out here. Whoa. Okay, not at all. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, my dad worked for white folk. He wouldn't even work for black folk because okay. black folk didn't pay and they didn't do right. He was a contractor. So, I grew up around a lot of whites. Uh, you said yes ma'am, you said no ma'am, you stayed in your place, they helped you out and they gave you things, they, you know, uh, they were always friends, they called your, your, your grandmama's auntie and, and they, everybody stayed in their place because they know where to be and how to be and you didn't cross that line. Okay. So there was never a problem uh, stirred up. Uh, I guess we were comfortable with it because we didn't have that problem. So is that what attracted you to the motorcycle set? Maybe because it, because of that lure of hey, these guys are doing their own thing. Maybe or they're doing something different than the actual normal safe thing. Well, you know, um, I think one of the things I was looking for was family. Okay. Uh, like I said, I didn't have I had one brother. Did all my relatives are down in Pine Mountain, Columbus, Lagrange, and Alabama? So. None of my relatives were here that I really grew up with. I would always have to go there to, to see them. And uh, I was always a tomboy. Okay. Uh, hung around my daddy. I went fishing. Uh, 
uh, learn how to change oil in my car. Uh, if something happened with the carburetor, you knew how to straighten it out. They, you know, get the car started if you ran out of gas back then. You know, I used to pull the gas yeah. over in there. Yeah. Uh, you know, you learned all those kind of things because I hung around guys. And when I started, when they started riding, driving three speeds and four speeds and five speeds, whatever, I always wanted to do that. But, um, I guess I just had big brothers. They were like big brothers to me because I didn't have a big brother. And um, uh, it, it it just drew me in. It intrigued me. So the myth that a female hanging around a motorcycle club that you had to fuck one of the members or be fucking one of the members, is that correct or no? That is, that is truly a myth. That is definitely a myth. If you wanted to do that, and that was the thing that you want to do. You were allowed to do that. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you. Okay, <laughs> but that was not something that you, that you had, had to do. To do. Yeah. Um, uh, people say that the folk that did it, I suppose, did it because they wanted to. Yeah. And those that didn't want to didn't have to. Um, <laughs> there were a lot of things that went on, and you saw a lot of things. Yeah. People well, I can imagine if you didn't have no hotel room, everything went on in the clubhouse. <laughs> it was some freaky shit going on in the clubhouse. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, you know a lot. Of, but here again, those were the things that, you know, like what they say was done in Vegas, stayed in Vegas. Uh -huh. You know, as part of the set, this was part of the set. This was, you know, everybody went out here talking about this one over here doing this and this one over here doing that. So this lady was with this. So she jumped from this club to that club. Yeah. And club. You know, can y'all imagine right now being at the clubhouse and watching some people fucking and getting down and you, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you motherfuckers couldn't even handle this shit like that. Y'all be on Instagram, you know what I'm uh, saying? Yeah. Hey, but people, people were, people, people were, people, people might, people stayed in their lane. People mind their own business. If you were having a good time, you were having a good time. I mean, that what they called you, it, having a good time? you were having a good, they were doing whatever they did. You over here doing whatever it is that you do. Yeah. Nobody bothered them. Nobody cared. Nobody yeah. whatever. Yeah. I mean, people, people loved each other. Yeah. You know what I mean? People, people really, and they would, even though it may not seem to look like people respect it. Like I said, they over there, that, that's their thing. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? We're over here, this our thing. Okay. You know? Uh, people respected each other and stayed off for business like that. Mm -hmm. You know, um, if you actually saw somebody doing something wrong, you were allowed to jake, yank their chain. You mm. know, you could tell them about it or, 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 or you know, but people people were people were loyal yeah oh jesus people were that's one thing i try to preach were, now loyalty people oh were goodness. loyal this this what we got going on now mm -mm, no uh i so, question the loyalty of a lot of people ain't got nothing to do with me but you know there are a lot of people on the set that just are not trustworthy mm. they oh, just shit. aren't I didn't say that. She said So, uh, what you see ain't always what you get. <laughs> you know, and 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 uh, the treachery and the backstabbing and, and, and the hate. I don't understand. So that shit couldn't, it, it couldn't have existed oh, it back would then. Oh, it would not have existed. Back then. Back then. First of all, like some of this stuff that's going on with these ladies and all, and you bringing it up in the clubhouse, uh-uh. You had a private deal of you were responsible for. You took care of that right then. Mm. Period. Yeah. You didn't have no problem with no wives. You didn't have no problem with no girlfriends. Girlfriends, boy, wives, whoever, side chick, however y'all want to yeah. Everybody knew their place. Everybody stayed in their place. And they didn't create no confusion. Mm. If things got out of line, guys took care of that. They didn't come back no more. Boom. You didn't Done have deal. that. Done deal. You didn't have that. Plus two, you were taught I guess unspoken rules they had and when you walked up in here that was something you didn't have you didn't bring in it in here anyway no if you bullshit. had you know bullshit up in when you come through that door yeah. that clubhouse if you liked me or didn't like me or whatever you didn't give a fuck didn't give a fuck yeah y'all took care of it while you were there when you got outside that door y'all could be whatever or go back to Cinderella like or whatever, yourself. but as long as you in here, you didn't you didn't have that. You didn't have that. Yeah. And you came here to get along. 
you pick these group of people to be with because you like them. Period. There was something about them that that you like, their their smiles, their camaraderie, their friendship, and you chose to be in clubs that you for that reason. For that reason because so it wasn't because that club was popular. Because not because it was popular, not because you want to come in and make it something else. You did not Make the club fit you. You fit the club. Mm. And if you did not fit that club, uh, you didn't join. Uh, Proby, uh, Proby period sometimes. I mean, I've seen outcasts give a Proby sometime a year or two before they allow them to come in. Do you know, a year or two. A year or two before they even allow them to come in because the extent I've watched some of them start off, Go for a minute and then go back and stay gone two or three years and then come back and start their process again. Being a pro B back then for a motorcycle club, it was no no easy job yeah. and it was serious. Yeah. It was dead serious. You didn't go join this club. Six months later, you join another club. Uh, a year later, you somewhere else. It wasn't that way. Mm. Um, and most of the times, if you got into that club, you stayed into that club. Just by for life. Mm. I mean, I you know, like I said, I've been around to different places, but you know, I'm I'm golden hog. And anybody who knows me will know me as a golden hog. What? The, okay, we you already spoke on that. You're not happy with the set now. Okay, as far as the no loyalty, the distrust, and all of that. What do you think about? What do you think about now? What's the biggest difference? I mean, uh, what do you think is the, the actual biggest difference? I'm going to stop it. What should you do? Oh, I didn't just stop it. Oh, oh that's I'm sorry. Bad. No problem, no problem. Um, the biggest difference. Hmm. I mean, again, being what you, knowing the shit you see now, like you said, a lot of shit, it wouldn't happen. Whatever issues had to be handled right then and there. Right. That shit was handled, done. You didn't bring that shit back. And you never even heard about it. Now, like, for me, one of the biggest things about the set now is that the, one of the biggest problems I have, and I preach this all the time, how do you not like me or have a problem with me? And I don't know if first. You know, you know a motherfucker don't like sell before sell, no. How's that? T again, that's that, that's that, that's that, 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 uh, that larceny that, that's coming up because... Here again, like I said, if you had a problem with somebody, yeah. you took care of that problem with somebody right then. Okay. Okay. If I had a problem with one of my sisters, or you had, you know, y'all brought this stuff to, it wasn't no he said, she said, or whatever, or I had to hear it across town next week. Yo, attack. Look, I heard you said so and so and so and so and yeah. so and so. We're going to squash you know that. And then, too, most of the time, if, if I said it, I said it. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But you all came to that right now. Y'all hashed it out. Y'all got mad. Y'all fought. Y'all, you know, there have been a couple of cut fights, yeah. you know, that we have behind some things like that. One-on-one, -on -one, not with no guns or no, no. nothing like that. Yeah. You know, it was just straight out, out battling with it. We got it out. We cussed it out. And you move on. Yeah. If I don't want to deal with you no more, I don't deal with you no more. Okay. Simple as that. I don't come back and and and, and hang around and talk about you. No, I'm done with you. I'm done with you. You know, we don't we don't come back and and and, and bring back up this. No, uh, uh. I'm done with you. Period. And that's the way, and that's the way we did that. Hmm. So we we kept down a lot of confusion that way. I don't know if because now we've just got so many people on the set with so many different personalities. I don't even think people get into motorcycle clubs like you say for the reasons of that we of got in, right and so yeah. of loving motorcycles and loving each other. Okay, they don't do that. I don't know some of the reasons. I've seen women with some reasons trying to find this and find that and. You know, I guess people got their own reasons, but I think it's destroyed. It's destroyed the set. It's, mm. it's just destroyed it, and 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 not only is it destroying the set, it's destroying individual clubs as well. Yeah. You know. So. Do you believe Georgia have too many clubs right now? You think it's too many clubs in Georgia, or should that ever even be an issue? I don't. I, I'm not. Being an issue, first of all, is to be in too many clubs. I don't think it should be. The thing is, people 
support who they support. Period. Oh, period. Okay, we got an instance on this past Saturday night. There were four or five folk had something going on here that people that I like and I need to, you know, want to give them that love and whatever. But you just can't do that. I mean, you can't put be yourself everywhere and one, be yeah. everywhere at yeah. one time. So you pick and choose and you holler at them and you go on. The other clubs shouldn't get angry with you because you didn't make it that time because they're going to have something else again that you can turn around and you can support for that time. Uh, everybody just can't support everybody well, I mean, you because are popular, though, if You don't show up. People, you know, I can see him working with Phyllis and Tito. If T would have they, they, they spotted him, they come up. <laughs> but, I, but, I, but, but you get Saturday night, I wasn't made, able to make all those places. Yeah. You know, I went down to, to, to Warner Robins. We come back. You know, I try to hit, you know, especially with my health issues and all. I really do try to give that love because that love is shown to me. Yeah. You know, when I go places and, and I see people and they're like, hey, T, and they want to give me a hug and we're going to take our selfies. And we love each other. Yeah. We truly, I feel that love. You know, if it's any fake folk out there, I think they stay away from me. Yeah. You know, they might smile and stand back, but they're not going to be the ones that's going to be hugging on me and, and, and all. And then, believe it or not, people really love people. Yeah. You know, uh, genuine type love. No, no bull job. And, and the women out there, some of them... Lord help that so the man <laughs> if he wanna be with you, you know, uh uh Peaches said it best. You know, if he you know don't run him, he if he wants you, he'll catch you. Yeah. But you know, I, I hate the treachery that the women have against each other uh uh about about men. You know what I'm saying? Uh I think they need to love each other and support each other and keep each other lifted up. Oh, so you said it's not enough, it's enough dick and pussy for everybody. Right, yeah, yeah. right, 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 right. Everybody, you know, and 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 he again, you know, if y'all share, I mean, if y'all don't mind sharing, that's all right too. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just you know, just 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 love each other. Just love each other. Just love. You know, what's gonna be is what's gonna be. And and you can't keep nothing that don't want to be kept, and you don't can't keep nothing that ain't yours no how. So I mean, enjoy. You know, like Isla Brothers, love the one you with. Yeah. When you with them, because you might not never see them again. And tomorrow, if you gotta love somebody else, love somebody else. I mean, you know, as long as you don't, because what what people do ain't got nothing to do with you no how. Yeah. You know, and nothing to do with you. So you just just do you. So let me ask you this. One of the things I preach on too is everybody taking from the bike. So nobody's giving. <laughs> yes, you do, country. You always get your hug. Oh, so country, he yeah. told me to give you a hug. To give my, yeah, he you know. always get his I get I get my hugs. From so country. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. So one of the things too, like I said, I, I love trying to preach on and trying to get this bond back together is that a lot of people are taking from the bike set and not giving. How do you feel about that? What do you think what do you think a person can give to the bike set if you period just on your own what, what can you give to the bike set you give your love of motorcycles you give your love of people um um that 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 energy when we're all together and 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 the bikes are running and, and yeah. throttling up and i mean that whole energy is 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 just it's infectious. It's healing. Yeah. Uh, it um, it just it 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 it's just soul stirring. It just helps yeah. you. You know, it's your survival. It just helps to keep you going. You know. Question: How does she feel about the change of the set with with it being female MCs? I'm proud of. Uh, our female motorcycle clubs and the motorcycle riders. Um, I have no problems with them. I'm very glad that they can do this because here again, when I came along, you couldn't be, you really didn't need to be seen riding a bike, much less being in a, a, a motorcycle club. Mm. Uh, so uh, not, and here again, I know a lot of people ask me that question about me. As long as I've been with the Hawks, why well, I've not joined or been a member and I ride and whatever, 
I guess I'm back from old school at the time when I came along. Women just didn't do that. Period. Period. Uh, maybe I'm just old school. I, I, I love it that they're doing that. Uh, I'm loving that they're riding the bikes. I'm loving that they're handling that. It's just that I have no choice or choose not to be in a motorcycle club. Okay. I'm enjoying all the benefits that I want to do. And at the time, the only benefit was riding. You could ride. Yeah. Without being in a club, okay. uh, you rode because you just in you you join the club because you want to be with that group of people to do that. So, but but everybody would just ride. So, uh, so you say you're proud of. The, I'm what, proud what, of. What, them. what was the first female motorcycle club in Atlanta that you know of? First real female. <laughs> she heard okay, real. Let, okay. <laughs> the 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 first. I, I, I just want to throw this out here, though. But the first club to even have a woman motorcycle member was the Golden Clocks. And that was Creasy. Creasy right now is in the nursing home. Bless her. I ask for prayers for every day. But she was the first female member of a motorcycle club okay. here. In Georgia. In Georgia, yeah. Mm. In Golden Clocks. What kind uh, of bike did she have? She had, I think, her, uh, it's anybody out there want to tell me right, but I think Creasy had that old... Uh, 800 Kawasaki, didn't she? 800 Kawasaki. I think it was an 800 Kawasaki. Because, like I said, the only bikes you rode then was selling 50 Hondas and, like you said, choppers, uh, uh, Kawasaki, Suzuki's. Okay. Uh, that was just about all that everybody rode back then. Uh, you had a Harley. It was a, you know, a piece of Harley. And uh, <laughs> what happened... You know, and I, I guess I'm changed. I came into the set was when the the super rides came in and they had number gold wings. Mm. Now that was something we had never seen before in our lives. Okay. So that was impressive. Okay. Yeah, they were impressive. They wore their suits. They wore their motorcycles. Uh, and at that time, gold wings cost pretty much. So you pretty much had to have a pretty good job in order to buy those things. So what, you don't have a clue as what was the first female. Oh, I want I would I really want to say uh, Queens of the South. The first female club, as far as official female club that said they had a a, a, a name and that's what they were. Well, no, no, take that back. Uh -uh. You guys, uh uh, no, take that back. I'm I'm, I'm wrong because they're not they're not a club now. The first club and I cannot think. Oh, Barbara was in that club. Oh, Barbara, uh, shucks, what was the name of that female club? Let's show you how it was. Oh, uh, but yeah, there was one, but I cannot, the name, mm. that I sit here long enough, I might think about it. So, let me ask you this now, that, that like now, you know, to start a club or to start a, ch a chapter in a city, you're supposed to have a blessing of the outlaws, but now they have all these different little other things you have to go through now. The councils and stuff like that. How do you feel? Does that help the transition, or does that just? Well, you know, it helps. It it, it helps the transit. You know, anything can help. But I don't know. It looks like this motorcycle thing now, instead of a hobby or uh, a recreation, like boat right now, it, it it it's turning into a business. You know okay. what I'm saying? And. In doing so and making a business, it's taking all the fun out. Okay. Oh, uh, we used to have fun. Now it's 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 so business like. Yeah. Uh, uh, the rules and the regulations, and I understand that those things help, but also sometimes too much of that is just too much. It takes the whole fun out of riding your motorcycle, mm. going where you want to go, putting on your miles. Not going nowhere if you don't want to go. Yeah. If you just want to go around the corner, because I was one of them. I went when I rode. I went from clubhouse to clubhouse to clubhouse. And that was that was it. When it came out of town, I was like I said, I was either riding on the back with somebody, and then we'd have to make that ship or whatever. But most of the time, if we were out of town, I I didn't ride. Hmm. I didn't drive. Yeah. Okay. It was clubhouse to clubhouse to clubhouse to clubhouse. Oh. Uh, it's just it's, it's just no fun anymore. Yeah. Just no fun. So, in turning things around, what do you think we need to start at? I have pondered about that and cried about that. And I don't know. Yeah. Um, I just can't pinpoint one thing uh, to be able to do so because 
If you could just take a magic wand and wish over there and make everybody feel the same way, it would be so much easier. But people are in this thing for so many of the wrong reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, and like I said, that loyalty is, is just not there anymore. Yeah. Uh, you call me your brother, you call me your sister, and you're the one that's stabbing me in the back. Mm. You know? Uh, and that that hurts. I mean, not only is it just is it just messed up, but the person that you're doing to, believe it or not, those folks have feelings. And if they felt that for you, uh, uh, it just hurts to think that they would just uh, diss you that way. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. Get back, Agnes. Get back. Get up for that Sam. We got a special guest in the house. <laughs> Move, Agnes. Miss Agnes, Miss Agnes, up in there. She wants her attention. <laughs> Go sit. So you said the fun. The fun, yeah, the fun, the fun. Oh, and when I'm talking about fun, you know, when we're all together, y'all can't say that we don't have fun. Mm. Oh, I'm bread beach blast. Oh. King of the South anniversary uh, uh, roundup. When we get together and we're actually out there for that purpose of enjoying each other and the and the and the bikes and the the whole bike scene, we have a good time. Do you think it should be? Do Do you think like the segregation, like you spoke on earlier, how you guys used to go over to the outlaws and outlaws used to come over to Golden Hawks? The like. When I first got into the bike set, one of the things that, you know, I had some great teachers, the regulators, my man Snowman, Quentin. Mm -hmm. I mean, they really are big on education and mm -hmm. history and stuff like that. One of the things I was taught, too, is that we don't do them, you know, we don't we do not do them, the white bikers, and they don't do us. Do you think that we need to get that back, or do you think it, the way it is, it, just keep it the way it is now? I don't know if, 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 if that's possible, because you have a different caliber of... Uh, Men, yeah, uh, and thoughts and ideas and things were different then. This younger set, I love my young people, I love them to death, don't get me wrong, but sometimes they're a little bit too hot headed, uh, sometimes they're a little bit too ego tripping, uh, trying to prove a point which don't make no difference because 30 years down the road it ain't gonna make a bit of difference in the world. Mm. Um, Sometimes they just need to sit back and look and watch or just sit back and just enjoy. Yeah. Just enjoy and, and, and not try to be the best of this or the biggest that or the, uh, 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 you know, just, just enjoy. Yeah. And what, what will be is what will come to them, it'll come to them. They will be the biggest or and the, the best bad, yeah. of that if they just because sit you back and enjoy. By, by, right. By, you've enjoy yeah. yeah, you've earned that. Right. So, uh uh, I just wish they cool down a little bit. I, I understand that the Black Lives Matter too uh, doesn't help it any, but uh, we need to, to calm our tempers down. Okay, now that you mentioned that, what about police officers and motorcycle clubs? Oh, back then it was oh shoot. Uh, <laughs> right now, you know, I I, I can see uh, members of the police force that are actual members of motorcycle clubs. Uh -huh. Uh, back then, oh, you were harassed. You were... I mean, just like I said, if you went out of town and you were a, a biker and you went to certain truck stops to yeah. stop to get your gas or to get some food, I mean, the police would come and they would surround you mm -hmm. and they would stay there with you until you left the premises. Whoa. And they would escort you back. On the freeway so, out of there. I, on that, yeah, to, especially to the end of the line of the county at that time. Yeah. We had that happen to us in uh, Mississippi. Okay. Uh, Tupelo. Oh, Tupelo, the whole thing that just surrounded us. Mm. Uh, and, and, and stayed with us until we left it. It didn't bother us. But then you had some little small towns like down in uh, Noonan down there. Uh, they would actually give you tickets or empire on your bikes or, or yeah. whatever because they could and because they felt that uh, bikers had a reputation that they were awful bad they were gonna kill you rape you women I mean, but where did that come from it had to be happening for people to get it or it was I just, it it was just something that was just made up TV? I think it came off of TV with the movies yeah 
uh, what's that guy made that movie? Easy you know, Rider. Or Easy Rider. Uh, yeah. Easy, yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I think that came from television. Yeah. Um, because you had clubs like, uh, you know, the, the Grand, you know, you had all these Shriners, not Shriners, the Masons, and you had all these different other clubs around here that, yeah. that, that, that did other things. So, I just think uh, TV gave them a bad image. Plus, you had the clubs out west, but I still think they were trying to live up to that image that was on TV. Okay, question just came in. What's up, Big Sir? Ask her about the clubs who don't ride or have events where you see 200 people and 10 bikes outside. How do you feel about that? <laughs> <laughs> well, my thing with this is if you're a motorcycle club, you ought to have motorcycles. Yeah. Bottom line. Bottom line. How can you not be a motorcycle club and you don't ride motorcycles? Well, I don't even see the point and you won't even be in a motorcycle club if you don't have a motorcycle. So, uh, uh, with that, but... Um, if you go to the events and you don't ride your bike for whatever reason, uh, I mean, folk can do ride what they want to ride. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh, if it's raining, you ain't got to prove no point to me that you can ride in the rain and ride your bike here and, and risk having an accident if you're not used to doing so. I mean, folk need to do what they do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you having a bike event and there's no motorcycles outside, I mean, what can I say? But if you in that club and you inside in there and you got MC on your back, you, you have, ought to have a motorcycle. Should be motor so if, if it ain't nothing but the club, it's hosting right. party. They right. motorcycles should be outside. Right, right, right. You know, you, you ought to have motorcycles. So uh, at least the club, like you said, <laughs> the club that's having the event should have. And that was at one point in time. I don't know about other clubs now, but at one point in time with the Golden Hearts, it was mandatory yeah. that if it was an anniversary, you had to be on. The you road. rode your bike. Rain you were, you yeah. rode your bike up there. You might get your your daughter, your brother, your sister, somebody take you back home, change but your bike clothes, was at the club. or what? But your bike was at the clubhouse. And as a matter of fact, I tell you one thing: I I do have this thing about. Like I said, we used to. Sleep in motorcycles, clubs, when we went places. But, you know, it just seemed kind of strange to me sometimes to go places and you have a motorcycle club and you don't have a motorcycle sitting inside somewhere. Mm. You know, because at one point, you, the, the, you know, members, instead of riding their bike home and sometimes going somewhere and getting in the car, they just left yeah. their bikes at the, club. at the clubhouse. So you said when you go to a clubhouse, a motorcycle clubhouse, you it's supposed have, to be a motorcycle too inside the clubhouse. inside the clubhouse. Somewhere in there somewhere. It looks like a man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, look just that just that just yeah. seems like to me it yeah. ought to, to be you a know, motorcycle club a motorcycle in the motorcycle club, club right? Have motorcycles, yeah. You know, uh, that was just I mean, it's a motorcycle club, yeah. You know, and if a member uh, don't want to drive his bike home or keep his bike, say he can, he don't ride except when he come from the club or something because yeah. he stay too far away from you know to yeah. drive, so he leaves his bike at the club. So that when he come up to the club, he can ride and whatever, and put it back there, and then drive a hundred miles back home. Mm. Um, I think that you know that ought to be you know you're in a motorcycle club. So let me ask you this: Somebody mentioned social clubs. What was the role of a social club back then? Social and savings clubs. What they started out. So it was called clubs. social and savings. Social and savings clubs were what mm. they started out to be, and they were just that. There were men or either women or, or groups, you know, church or whatever. They got together as a social club. They they had functions. They raised money. They paid dues. They did different things. And they did different things for the community. They did took trips. They were their own club doing those things. So it wasn't related to the motorcycle club? At that time, it was not related to motorcycle clubs. Uh they started, as they got bigger, and at being social as they are, and start going places, and motorcycle clubs had clubhouses. Okay. Because uh, they were the equivalent of uh, the 617 on Simpson, or all the little uh, in the hole in the wall clubs. Uh, there were places to go. So, 
somebody, I'm assuming, started dating somebody that was in a social same club. I know in my particular case, I was in the social club and Super Riders, uh, my old man was in the Super Riders at that time. So we you, were... You brought them in. Right. We were going to, trying to raise money. Uh, for our social and saving club so I pitched it to them you know like uh, can we have stuff at the clubhouse. the clubhouse and not have to pay or we give y'all X amount of money or whatever cheaper blah, 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 blah. Rent, cheaper yeah. Than, yeah they're trying to go close you know we were having these little teas and I things in each other's houses back during that time so this gave us a chance to really get out and, 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 and make some money yeah. and they will have a following anyway so we identified ourselves with that club and eventually we got to be their sister club hmm. so that way we at the clubhouse all the time then we would fix food and stuff for them and you know when we had our anniversary, they would escort us out and vice versa, okay. you know. So uh, that was how we, the, the socialites, came associated with bike clubs. Uh, with the Super Riders, several clubs, social savings clubs, which there were not a lot at that time, but they came. Uh, Blaze could probably fill you in on that a little bit better because she was in one. And they would visit the, 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 the Super Riders. Okay. Um, and uh, they would visit the pay setters. They would visit those places. Yeah. And uh, eventually, we just everybody was that was looking to party and have a good time and start partying and have a good time with each other. So they just kind of that's kind of how they just started right. They just kind of yeah. right. You know. Um, so there. So the, the the truth is, social clubs were never a part of the MC originally. Originally, right. And then they just because, like you said, one person was dating a motorcycle cat or whatever, and them looking for the savings. It were somehow kind of got merged. Right, right, right. But yeah, they were social and savings club. Had nothing to do with motorcycles. Uh, just basically just their own little entity. Carter saying um, it was the Sunday Tees. Right, right, different right, that's right. That's right. That's what I'm saying. The Sunday Tees were at uh, different clubhouses. And uh, like I said, this, the, the motorcycle clubs then were the equivalent of the clubs that were up and down Simpson, up and down Bankhead, that we as people frequented back then because we didn't go to the TGI Fridays or to uh, the the other clubs downtown because, first of all, they didn't have motorcycles. They would have never had them there in the okay. first place. So, uh, uh, and, and, and when you went to those motorcycle clubhouses, the people always treated you so nice, especially the ladies. If yeah. you came up in there, you know there was no harassing. You know, like if you go to Camelton Road to the club, you go in and sit You're down in the bar. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so see, this was that gave us a reprieve from that type of harassment. I got you. Yeah, just like first time I met the Kings and I came to y'all's clubhouse, everybody's just so nice and they could say, you know, you need anything, blah, 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 blah. You know, you go to well. That's that's one of the things too. I try to tell people. Like for me, it's hard for me to go to any regular club because yeah. I'm, in, I'm, a, I'm you know I'm on motorcycle shit now. So right, and it's the respect that that's given to you at a motorcycle club. You're not getting patted down. You're not supposed to be getting patted down. Right. Some of these new MCs with this yeah they patting do. niggas down shit. They do. They do. And 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 yeah. they do. They do. <laughs> but anyway, that. I, I'm just more familiar and more comfortable right. at motorcycle club functions right. than going to regular clubs or, right, right. or whatever. So Yeah. You know. Yeah. Even though the drinks are better and higher, but you know, it just doesn't <laughs> still give you that that about this life feel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Uh I understand you you you're trying to to sponsor and try to help folk with this and that and the other, but Back then, like I said, and, and, and the old ones know, Cujo, all of them know, if you were a motorcycle club, you went to motorcycle clubhouses, and that was it. Period. Period. You know, the only time that you might not have been at your clubhouse for something was during anniversary that you might go and rent some place bigger, some uh, uh, town or, 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 yeah, or, or, yeah. or some other building in order to uh, host have your host your anniversary. But other than that, you did everything at your clubhouse. Funerals, uh, I mean, you know, it, just like the strikers and everybody know. Everything was done at your clubhouse. Mm. People got married at the clubhouse. Everything was done at your clubhouse. 
to real motorcycles. Yeah, you know, everything was done. That was your family. That was your home. I, my children were raised in the in the president's room in 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 uh, uh, in their buggies and stuff because we all took care of each other's children and we stayed at the clubhouse. Yeah. That was what we did. You know, that was our home away from home. Stop. <laughs> Yeah, that, you know we were family. Yeah. We were true. We were truly family. <laughs> you true. know, you went to grandmama if grandmama passed, or uh, a homecoming, or foot washing, whatever the family your your own immediately fam family did. Your biker family did it with you as well. Mm. You know, there have been lots of bikers that have gone down to Lagrange and Pine Mountain with me. Uh, or our family picnics and fish fries and what have you. Uh, Thanksgiving, this house used to be filled with outcasts because my mama would cook uh, uh, Thanksgiving dinner and juke and handgun and all that whole crew of people would come over here and they would eat. Let's talk about you that. Know? I'm glad you brought that up. You say the, the bike set has the stigma of being rowdy or, or you know, we have that, that untrue perception. Mm -hmm. But look at the names: sticks, <laughs> handguns, <laughs> so and so. Where did where did that part? Where did where did the part come from? Where we have to appear tough, even though we not as tough as we appear. Where did that come from? You know, I'm, I still want to say television. I don't know. <laughs> I still I still want to say that the perception that we got off of television or that that movie back in the day or or what. Uh, uh, images came out of California as you know the bikers with the long beards yeah. and what have you. You know, I'm still I see those pictures and I'm thinking we're just trying to be that way uh, because believe it or not, considering like you said, some of the Masons and some of the other different clubs. The, when I went started going to biker clubs at that time. Uh, biker clubs were the nicest bunch of folk <laughs> than <laughs> some of them folk. And, I, and see, back during those days, too, van clubs were yeah, real popular. Yeah, my daddy was in a van club. Okay, That's and see, I, yeah. so, cause see, van clubs had their club. A lot of the van club people ended up being motorcycle people. Yeah, my after dad the, was in all for the, one van. The van, van okay, yeah. okay. And, yeah, and van, van club, we had one of them masters, on yeah. Lee Street. Yeah. Uh, Ebony Travelers. Okay. And most of them ended up being super riders uh, okay. in motorcycles after the van club. But their, their clubhouse was right here on Lee Street, right here at the corner of Lee Street and Avon. And uh, Social and Savings Clubs, they used to come there. Uh, but uh, they had a different image. Yeah. And but on the side, all the van club guys rode motorcycles. Mm. You know, and that's when they got to be the bad boy. Okay. You know, they were van club riders with the little, you know, the coordinated clothes on, nice. And then at nighttime, they rode the bikes, and they were just bad guys. It's some about the sound of that throttle that I guess makes you want to be a bad guy. Mm. You know, that sound, that mm. whoosh, that. Well, there's a lot whoosh. of it. I think a lot of it has to do now with. <laughs> A lot of these cats for me, man. A lot of cats that I know, and and, I, and I'm gonna say this, and I don't know, don't don't mean no harm, but a lot of the cats that I know that were regular motorcycle riders, when they switch clubs and become, let's say, part of an OMC, they change into a whole hmm. different person, and that that's always been a mind boggling thing for me because before you were in that particular OMC, and you were just in a regular motorcycle club, right? We could talk and have fun and laugh, but now. You know, when I see you now, it's, you know, you don't, we act like we don't even know, right, each, know other. each other. Right. And I don't know if that's something that the OMC instilled in you or is regulation for the OMC, but it's just amazing to me. Now, see, it looks, it's, but see, and see, that's the way it looks. It looks like it's regulation for them because the same thing has happened to me with some property of. Yeah. You know, uh, we were all friends and sisters all before then. And then when you go there, you know, you can't even. I see you at a club. I can't even talk to you yeah. unless you get permission to <laughs> to say hello to me. Yeah. Or or you can talk to me for a few minutes, but then you got to go off, or we can't go over here and sit at the table. You know, you you got to be with your folks. So yeah, uh, I've had that happen to me. I just think it's just part of the demeanor that they're supposed to have, being who they are. Mm. You know, I mean that's just my take on it. Yeah, and like I say, we you know that's that. So. There it is. That's your history lesson about Atlanta. What else between... Uh, you say you've seen some wars come and go and you've seen... Yeah, 
yeah, you we we've had we've had wars, uh, and some of the wars I'm really not at liberty to even talk about. Yeah. Because even still, in spite of uh, you know, you know things, but you still don't talk about them. Yeah. And that's, just, room, yeah. that's it. That's the Keep rule of thing. But we've had wars, and apparently we're still having wars. Uh, I can't make sense of the ones that we're having now no more than the ones I could make sense of back right then. then. Okay. Um, and why we have to have this hatred and battle back and forth for each other. It's not like, you know, you trying to have a certain territory or or this is my side of the road or you know, it's not yeah. that type of thing. So I don't understand why we battling against each other to prove what? I don't understand what you're trying to prove. Yeah. Prove what that you the baddest what baddest of what? Well yeah. I mean what you know, I don't understand uh, all of this what they're trying to do so um uh, 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 I don't know if it'll ever stop because you know it's going on a lot more now. Look, well, it was prevalent back then, but you know yeah. they, you know they just took care of you and that was done. You know they just, you know, they did. They just took care of it and it was done. Now it's a lot of back and forth, back and forth. I right? you do this and I gotta retaliate. You do that, then you gotta come back and do this. When really we don't even know. The original, original part of the we, right, we right figured anyway. out who was right or wrong yeah, uh, or whatever <laughs> in the first place when we started what this was all even about. Yeah. You know? So, um that needs to that's what they need to figure out what they're mad at each other about. Why mm. they angry with each other. And uh if you don't wanna come and visit me or support me, then just don't. Yeah. I still, I'm not going to bother you for the folk that support you yeah. and the folk that come in town to visit you. I'm not going to bother you about them. Yeah. You know, everybody just do who they do. And then that way you shouldn't have any problems because we're not interacting with each other. Mm. You know, you just stay on your side. So, uh, find out the problem. If they can't, just stay away. Well, there it is there, man. I'm with the sweet team, man. Mm -hmm. I hope you guys have learned something. Um... Is there anything you want to leave the people with? No, I just, I just, I would just, you know, I know things can't come back and the past is past and, 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 and now it's now. I just wish we'd love each other. Uh, they said that 10 hugs a day helps to stimulate you and to keep you living longer. Just, just love each other and hug each other and, and let it be just about the motorcycles. You know, not who's got what house or who's got what job or, you know, just about the motorcycles that that's what you like to do and that you ride. And if you don't feel like riding, it's okay. Nobody cares you don't ride. Yeah. If you got the bike, you used to ride it. I do. She going to let you I get know. a pass. You I, used to ride it or no whatever, pass. fine. Okay. <laughs> all right. You know, but uh, I, just, I just want y'all to love each other. That's all. Well, there it is there, man. I hope you guys... Learn something. I hope you guys got some of your questions answered. This is part one tonight. I'm doing another interview tonight that's going to blow your socks off, too. I have another great guest for tonight. Um, and again, these OGs, man, this is all I do. Everywhere I go, that's what I'm doing. I'm seeking out an OG to get knowledge, to confirm, you know, some of these different things that I've been taught on the set, to hopefully make me a better person, to hopefully where I can leave something on the set instead of taking everything. So, again, Y'all know I love y'all. T love y'all. And her whole thing is just, let's get some respect back, man. Yeah. Yeah. Get some respect back and definitely get some love back for what this all is about, the motorcycle club. So, mm -hmm. there it is there. Love y'all. Peace, Middle East, hair grease, all that other good stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and number one, ride your motorcycle. Y'all already know yeah. that. She gonna give you a pass. Yeah, yeah ride your I ain't, I ain't get, you know, They gotta ride tell them again? Yeah, ride your motorcycle. <laughs> At least half a motorcycle. <laughs> at least half. At least half a motorcycle. At least half one. Yeah, at least half one. Hey, well, there it is. <laughs> it's your boy Big Set Up at Church, and I see. Hope y'all enjoyed this, man. And again, don't forget tonight, eight thirty p.m. tonight, I'll be going live again with another headbanger. I promise you. It's your boy Cell. I'm gone. Peace. Bye. <laughs>